Welcome to the second clip on Woodcraft Furnishes. If you can recall, if you watched the previous one, we prepared all the journals for the April month of April. And now we're going to continue to do the postings from those journals to the general ledger. You can have your suggested solutions or your own exercise handy to assist in this posting to the general ledger. I just quickly want to recap at what point you need to be. If we can have a look at our cash journals. In the cash receipts journal, we have these analysis columns. The first column here, bank, for cash receipts, will result in an increase in assets. Therefore, that will be our debit. And all the other columns will represent credits, unless you indicate it otherwise. You remember the use of the brackets for settlement discount. And the cost of sales column is our reminder for the perpetual inventory system that we need a corresponding second set of debits and credits to account for the cost price of the sold items. Therefore, this column will result in a debit and a credit entry. The same for the cash receipts journal. You can do the indication at the bottom of which column will re represent either a debit or a credit in your item that is identified at the top. Let's start then with the cash receipts journal and do the postings now at the end of April. If you refer to your diagram in your workbook where we have the accounting process, we started off with transactions and source documents. From there, we entered the transactions in these journals. And now at the end of every month, we need to do postings to our general ledger. In our bank account, we want an entry on the debit side of 62,990. This was the transactions for April, but we did start off with a balance in our bank account on the 1st of April in the question, bank debit of 18,066. So if we can use this balance to start off, remember those amounts won't disappear overnight. Our assets and liabilities, they will remain there. So we're going to have our entry on the 1st of April as our balance brought down. And the amount is 18066. 1st of April. That means that this is the result of all our cash transactions prior to the 1st of April. So we can now add to this or take away from this depending on the amounts in our journals. In our cash receipts journal, in the bank column, we have a total receipts for April 20.6 of 62,990. So we indicated that we're going to increase our asset on the debit side. So on the debit side of the bank account, we can include our 62,990. Like we already discussed, these transactions will be entered at the end of the month. And for April, that will be the 30th of April. In the details column here, we need to give an indication of where this person can look for the corresponding credit to make up the 62,990. Now, in my cash receipts journal, that is not one account. That is a number of other accounts that I received money for. Therefore, I use a collective term, and the term that I'm going to use is total receipts. And if the individual is interested in the details, I can guide this person by using the folio number. Go and have a look at the cash receipts journal, and there you can find a breakup of the 62,990. I've now entered the first column of the cash receipts journal in my general ledger, the 62,990. And now I have to go and enter all the other columns in their corresponding general ledger accounts as well.
For the sales account, I indicated that that's going to be on the credit side. So if we have a look at the credit side of the sales account, on the credit side, 30th of April, I include my sales column total of 55,190. I again indicate using the folio number where I received the breakdown or where I got the amount from. And then the corresponding debit for this credit is in the bank account. Can you see that the details is reserved for account names, not descriptions like in the journals. This is account names, unless you can use a collective term like in the bank account. So that 55,190 represents the sales column from the cash receipts journal. Back to my journal. The next column that I find is the cost of sales column. Cost of sales related to the sales transactions for the month. It's a reminder of my second set of debits and credits for every sales transaction using the perpetual inventory system. If I sell, my inventory will decrease. So I will have to include this amount in both the cost of sales and the inventory accounts. Inventory account is an asset. So if we go over to our inventory account, it's an asset account which will increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. So now I can determine for that column that my inventory increase or decrease with the sales transaction. We also started off with inventory because we can't sell if we do not have any inventory in our storeroom. So we started off with a balance on the 1st of April. to the value of 48,900 Rand. So from that balance, we now sold according to our cash receipts journal and the value of the sales is 36,793. This is now the cost price of the sold items because remember, if I add into this account at cost price, I have to take out at cost price as well. This is from the cash receipts journal. This entry will be on the 30th of April. And for this corresponding debit, I'm going to debit the expense cost of sales. For every credit, I need a corresponding debit and in the Cost of sales account then, if we have a look at what happened to cost of sales. On the debit side, we have the same 36,793. This comes from the cash receipts journal and the corresponding credit for this debit is in the inventory account. In this account, you can clearly see that folio numbers can make a difference to clarify certain amounts because this transaction for cash sales and the transaction for credit sales, the cost price of those, is exactly the same except for the folio number. That will give you an indication that the one was cash and the other one was credit. Back to our cash receipts journal. The next column that we need to account for is the debtors control. And as you can see, we decided that we're going to credit debtors control because the more money we receive from them, the less they will owe us. So in our general ledger, we need to go over to our debtors control account. We started off with the debtors owing us an amount of 20,068. And that balance I got from the question, debtors control, 20,068. And you will notice that this debtors control total is in agreement with the debtors ledger total at the top. I already mentioned that we're going to keep track of the transactions for debtors, both in total 
and as individuals. So we're going to use this total in the control account of the general ledger. So in our debtors control account, we started off on the 1st of April with this balance of 20,068. And now in the sales journal, uh, in the cash receipts journal, sorry for that, cash receipts journal, we had a credit entry of 8,118 Rand, resulting in them owing us less. So that 8,118 8 Rand will be included in the credit side of the debtors control column. I got this from the cash receipts journal. This will also be transferred to the general ledger at the end of the month. So that will be the 30th of April. And now my details, if you can recall certain transactions, if the debtor comes to settle his account, you might also allow discount. His account will decrease with both the cash element and the discount part. So this 8,118 you see comprises of not only cash, but also discount. The 4,200 is both the cash and the discount. So I can't put my details for this as down as bank because it's not only the cash, it's also the settlement discount that I granted to the debtors. So your details in your debtors control account will not only be bank, but it will be bank and settlement discount granted. Remember, I can use abbreviations for explanation purposes. Please do not use abbreviations in your answers in the test. If we have this column on the credit side, I reminded myself of a debit in settlement discount granted. So if we have a look at the settlement discount granted general ledger account, on the debit side, the 318 Rand settlement discount granted is an expense. It will decrease my profits. So the bigger the expense, the smaller the profits. That's why it's on the debit side. And you'll see the details here is not bank because I'm not going to pay them for the settlement discount. I'm only granting them this. That will make their account decrease. I get that from the cash receipts journal and the transfer will also be on the 30th of April. Now you've posted to all the accounts for the cash receipts journal. You will follow a similar process for cash payments. The same for the debtors, creditors, creditors allowances and petty cash. The only difference that we have is when we try and post from the general journal. If we have a look at the general journal, you'll see that we only have a debit and a credit column. No adding up at the bottom at the end of the month. Therefore, if we post from the general journal to the general ledger, the date of the posting will be on the 19th, the 23rd and the 29th, the date of the transaction. Let's just have a look at one of these entries. On the 19th, I, we had a debit entry in drawings and a credit in inventory. Inventory decreased with the owner taking goods. So in my inventory account, I will have the transaction on the 19th. So in the inventory account, on the credit side, on the 19th of April, I will have to enter that transaction from the general journal. The value was 1,600 and I give an indication of the journal that I got it from. In my details column, I put the corresponding debit entry and that was for drawings. This will be the case for any journal entry where you cannot use a total at the end of the month. If we have a look at the cash payments journal, sundry accounts, you'll see we cannot add up, we cannot use this total at the bottom 
for any particular account because it comprises of a number of entries that occurred into different general ledger accounts. So each of these entries in, for instance, the telephone account, the 980, will not be posted at the end of the month, but it will be posted on the date of the transaction. Therefore, you have to refer to your day column for those postings. The next step, once you've transferred all your journals over to your general ledger, is to balance the accounts where you have entries on both sides. So let's use the bank account, as most of you will be familiar with that. Bank, in this case, was an asset, increasing on the debit side and decreasing on the credit side. We started off with money in the bank, the balance brought down on the 1st of April, which we got from the given information. We can add to this on the debit side my total receipts for the month and deduct on the credit side my total payments from the cash payments journal. If I just give this information to users, they won't be able to determine do you now have money left in the bank or do you owe the bank at this point. We need to balance this asset to determine this, the balance at the end of the month, which we can start with on the first of the next month. On the debit side, we had a balance of 18 and total receipts of 62,990. And if you add those two amounts, that will result in the 81,056 total debits. Balancing the account means I want both sides of these, this account to add up to the same total. So I put that 81,056 in on the credit side. At this point, I only have a credit of 45,118. So the difference between the 81 and the 45 must still be entered on the credit side in order for this account to be in balance. That is my balancing entry, balance carry down of 35,938. And remember, for every credit, you need a debit. The balancing debit and credit will occur in the same account. So we're going to credit the bank with a 35 to get it balance carry down, and then a balance brought down of 35,938. If you just think of this in terms of mathematics and your logic, if your increases added up to 81 and your decrease only 45, you have to end up with a positive balance on the debit side of 35,938. But you can't just enter it, the accounting entries, we need this balancing action that we had there. You will do this balancing for all the assets, liabilities, and your more permanent equity items. In the next question clip for this question, we will be dealing with postings to the debtors and creditors' ledgers. <laughs>